I'm here with Jack Van Tatum, SBCA of Texas at Dallas. And my first question is, do a lot of pets get adopted during the holidays? Um, we are fortunate enough to have a partnership with North Park Mall. And during the month of December, we're able to take our animals out to the mall location, which is a great time of year for hustle and bustle, mall traffic. And people are in a great location to see and view a lot of our animals that are waiting for homes. So because of that, we do have an increase in adoptions um, for the month of December, the holiday season. And generally, we average about 250 adoptions during that month. So that's a great um, rate for us. Or anything people should consider before adopting pets? That's a great question. Um, pets are a long-term commitment um, and that puppy and that kitten will grow up and be with you for an extended amount of time, sometimes between 15 to 18 years. Um, so we really ask people to um, first stop, really analyze past this puppyhood, past this kittenhood, what does your daily time look like to devote to an animal? Um, do you have the time to invest in the training, the socialization? Do you have the money for the vet bills, the, the care when traveling, boarding the animal? Um, and do you have the room in your home to really take on an animal that's going to grow into that space? We also encourage people to, if they have a current dog at home who is vaccinated, bring that dog to the shelter. Do a meet and greet with that new potential dog, and it's a great way to see how that dynamic will be. Of course, there's always adjustment periods, but if, if they're buddies from the get-go, that's going to make life a lot easier for the new family. As far as like holiday tips go and what to do and what not to do, are there any other tips that you can maybe give us that most people don't think about? Yeah, uh, during this holiday season, we tend to have a lot of holiday plants in our homes, like poinsettias and mistletoe and holly, and those, if digested by an animal, can cause some problems later on down the road, like vomiting and diarrhea. And um, some can cause gastrointestinal issues and cardiovascular issues, like mistletoe um, can cause a little heart problems in animals if consumed in large quantities. So when we're bringing these holiday plants into our home, let's just make sure to pick them up off the floor, um, animal-proof them, cat-proof them, if you will, um, doggy-proof them. Just don't have them be little temptations for your animals, as well as um, our, our decorations around our home and our Christmas trees. Um, we encourage people to make sure that if you have an animal that tends to be a, a nipper at cords, make sure that animal is always supervised when they're around like Christmas lights or, or new like Christmas electronical equipment that are plugged in. And there's some great tools that I've used in my home to help prevent cats from nipping um, at the cords. We use a, a non-toxic animal friendly spray that I've put on cords before that um, kind of deters licking and biting because it's bitter to the animal. They won't keep chewing on that cord, which can lead to electric shock, of course. Um, and then if you have a cat that loves to play with ornaments, make sure your ornaments aren't breakable. Because um, if that cat's going to come up and start batting at that glass ball on the tree and it breaks, um, you could have you know the paw pads on the paws being cut later. That can cause injuries. Um, just walking across it for you know a child in a home or a pet or yourself. Um, and if you have tinsel that animals tend to be tempted to, make sure you just put that up higher. Just not uh, not present so many great temptations for our furry friends. One last question I have for you, and if I'm going to adopt a pet, and mm -hmm. most people might think, yeah, no kill shelters. You know, mm -hmm. go to a no kill shelter because those are the last chance animals. Mm -hmm. um, with the SPCA, are you guys a no kill shelter, or how does that work? And um, we are what's called a reservation required shelter and we control our intake we only take in animals we have space for so we don't have to euthanize for space so when people surrender animals to us they go through a behavior and health assessment and once if they pass their behavior and health assessment they can stay on our adoption floor as long as they're healthy and non-aggressive um, so I have seen animals stay here for six to nine months at a time before they found their perfect families um, we're very fortunate in that our board has mandated this and we don't have to euthanize for space. Um, no, no kill shelters versus kill shelters. I personally think shop around. Know the type of animal you're looking for. Of course, I would love to say adopt all your animals for SPCA Texas, but there are animals and shelters all over the DFW Metroplex who need and are waiting for homes, and some of them have time limits.